Hey, welcome to the Freedom Temple Church. My name is Pastor Sean Stewart, and I want to show you some excerpts of our church anniversary with our guest speaker, Overseer Yvonne Harrison, all the way from Restoration Temple Ministries in New York, New York. Come on in. Let's have a conversation. Right, right, right. 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 existential wrestling as I prepared this sermon because I wanted to preach from every chapter but you know they they say I'm long-winded pastor so I decided to narrow it down to one chapter just a couple of verses if you will turn to Nehemiah chapter 4 Nehemiah chapter 4 I'm going to be reading from you from the new international version the holy scriptures Nehemiah chapter 4, if you're there, say amen. amen. If you need me to wait, say wait for me. All right. Nehemiah chapter 4, and it reads as thus. When Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said... What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in one day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble? Burned as they are? Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, What? They are building, even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. Hear us, O oh God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. <laughs> Give them over as plunder and land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of their builders. Verse 6, so we rebuilt the wall 
till all of it reached half its height. For the people worked. The people worked with all their heart. I want to tag the text this evening. Unstoppable momentum. And as a sermonic theme, I want to subtitle this text, Building in Spite of Opposition. I want to tag the text, Unstoppable Momentum. And as a sermonic theme, a subtitle, Building in Spite of Opposition. You can take your seats. Building in Spite of Opposition. Building in spite or in the face of ridicule. Uh, opposition. Naysayers. Haters. Agitators. Pessimists. I wish I had somebody in the sanctuary tonight. Pastor Sean, as a thematic framework, your theme, Unstoppable Momentum, is pregnant with purpose. It's powerfully packed with preaching possibilities. Yeah. Momentum Church is usually a byproduct of a great vision. Momentum is usually a byproduct of a great vision. And a great vision needs momentum. For contextual purposes, I will define momentum as the power of a moving object. Momentum, the power of a moving object. In fact, Wikipedia defines momentum as thus. It is the impetus gained by a powerful moving object. Woo. I said the definition of momentum is the impetus gained by a powerful moving object. The quantity of motion, huh? The quantity of motion of a moving body measured as a product of its mass in velocity. Rewind, press play. Momentum is the quality of motion. It is a moving body measured as a product of its mass velocity. In other words, the more power you have, the more velocity you have. Oh my God. The less power you have, the less velocity you have, the less momentum you have. Tap your neighbor said, do you have the power? Yes, power. In conclusion, momentum only occurs in moving objects. All right, all right, all right.
up up in here. Truth be told, all of us can attest to having a group of adversaries, antagonists, I'm going somewhere, competitors, rival opponents who are not ecstatic about you being called to do what God called you to do. Last time I checked, you don't have to be upset with me for what I chose to do. You got to be upset with God because he was the one that called me. He was the one that anointed me. He was the one that appointed me. He was the one that gifted me. Tap your neighbor and say, you got a problem with it. Take it up with God. Personally, personally, if I, if I can pause parenthetically, Sean, huh, I don't have a problem with the antagonists outside the church. I don't have a problem, sis, with the haters outside the church, the critics outside the church, the naysayers outside the church. Because for all I know, they can say whatever they want to say. I have a problem parenthetically with the haters inside the church, with the critics inside the church.
themselves up to be anointed. I stopped by to tell you, Freedom Temple, that opposition, hear this, and criticism is necessary to achieve the vision. I'm gonna preach this myself. I stopped by to tell you that criticism and opposition is necessary for you to build the vision and rebuild the walls. It is necessary for you to have friction. Church was called by God to do what seemed impossible. 
inconceivable and unattainable. Nehemiah was called to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, which had been lying in rubble for thousands of years. That's it. That's it. Nehemiah, the Bible states that he assessed the walls of Jerusalem. He surveyed yeah. the condition yeah. of Jerusalem. Yeah. Uh, his countenance was sad and discontent, church. Oh, I wish I had a pastor here who can see the lies of the land, who can see what lies in beneath the walls, who lies with beneath your congregation and understand that that will build discontent, heartache, and sadness. Yes. Nehemiah was discouraged that the city where his ancestors were buried lies in ruins. The gates had been burned with fire. He prayed earnestly that God would find favor with him and send him to Judah to rebuild the wall. Nehemiah was deeply concerned. Tap my neighbor said deeply. deeply. You want to thank God that Pastor Sean is deeply concerned. That he decided to follow the law, what the law said. He decided to be obedient and opening up Freedom Temple. Tell me, neighbor, say, you wouldn't have freedom if it wasn't for him being obedient. I wish I had some help up in here. Where the real church at, who's free and free indeed. All right. Nehemiah was deeply concerned. I love pastors who are deeply concerned about the people and not prosperity. Oh I love pastors, oh my God, rewind, press play, who are deeply concerned about the people and not prosperity. I want to see pastors who are deeply concerned about salvation, about souls. They are more concerned about wealth and popularity. Tell your neighbors that I'm so glad that Nehemiah was concerned about the state of the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Nehemiah says, it's not, but not only was it a place where his ancestors were buried, but watch this. Nehemiah says he was concerned about Jerusalem because Jerusalem was a city of refuge because you cannot come up in the house of God and do what you want to do how you want to do it when you want to do it oh, sir no ma'am let me rush on here Nehemiah was compelled to do something compelled felt in his heart that God had positioned him and purposed him to rebuild the walls. And just like Nehemiah, I felt the Holy Ghost say that Pastor Sean was compelled. Compelled. Compelled to start Freedom Temple a year ago. And you want to be glad that you made it to your first year anniversary. I know plenty of churches that don't make it to six months, let alone one year. You want to thank God that he's given you fortitude. He's given you strength. He's given you power. He's given you the anointing. He's given you his presence. He's given you boldness. He's given you authority. All right, let me move on. Right. Oh, God, I wish I was back home. Oh, my God. He saw... Watch this. Pastor Sean and my spirit saw that there were denominational walls put up. Wow. Wow. You're right. You're right. Wow. That is good. Wow. You're right. Mm. Uh-huh. You're right. Socioeconomical walls put up. Gender equality walls put up. Traditional walls put up. And so he saw the necessity to rebuild in this community. There's three things in this text, and I'm going to have my seat. Is that all right? Can I just do a real quick deductive style sermon? Three points. Let me give you the first point. The first point is recognize the condition of the wall. The first point in this deductive style sermon is number one, point number one for those who are writing, recognize the condition of the wall. The rough reality before you rebuild, Pastor Sean, is to recognize that there are some walls within that need to be rebuilt. Tell me, neighbors, there's some walls within. You've experienced some pain and you put up a wall. People that hurt you, abused you, misused you. In fact, the church that misused you, traditional church, oops, don't, don't act like traditional church is the only church that hurt people because inclusive churches and affirming churches hurt people too because it's not the name of the church, it's the people in the church. The church don't hurt people, but hurt people hurt people. Yes. Yes. All right. yes. So you have some walls that 
you put up. You can't trust this pastor because your other pastor was condemning you to hell. All right, all right. All right. Tell my neighbor, say walls. You won't step into another church because that church kicked you out. I'm not talking about you, brother, but maybe after the Holy Ghost moving. Tell your neighbor, say you put up some walls. Relational walls. Somebody took you for granted. God sent the right person, but you are allowing the right person to experience the pain that the other person is supposed to experience. Take your neighbor and say, it ain't his fault that that person did you wrong. You got the right person in front of you, and you don't know how to treat them because you mistreating the one. Tap your neighbor and say, put down that wall. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. How about? Hallelujah. Are you all Hallelujah. Yes. Right. You in a relationship, and that person did you wrong. Yes. Abused you. Mistreated you. Misused you. You didn't heal from that relationship. So you took that wall, went you into the other relationship, and the person who was right for you was trying to break the wall down, but you was too hurt. You was too full of lack of trust that that person could deal with the pain that should have been given to the other person. So you lost the person. Oh my God. Okay. I, I feel like I'm speaking to somebody in here. Okay. Lost the person that God ordained for you because of the relational wall. Tell the name and say relational. relational. That you put up. Right here this. Mothers and fathers abused us. Mothers and fathers threw us away. But then we come into the church. There's mothers and fathers in the church who can love on us and support us and encourage us. But you don't know how to accept the mother of the church or the father of the church because your mother and father wasn't there. Tell your neighbor and say familiar wall. Before you can get on the wall, Sean, you got to break down the wall that's on the inside of you. Right, right. Nehemiah got up after he mourned. Listen, that's prophetic. He got up after he mourned. That's good, that's good, that's good. Nehemiah mourned for the city of Jerusalem. I heard the Holy Ghost say, you are mourning over that past relationship. You are mourning over that situation. You are mourning over that friendship. You are mourning because your parents wasn't there. But after Nehemiah mourned, he got up to do the work. Tell your neighbor, say, it's time for you to stop mourning. And it's time for you to arise. Nehemiah recognized the condition of the wall. He got up after he mourned and he said, Pastor Shren, he said, it's time to rebuild. And he made a declaration. He made a declaration. He realized that he could not rebuild the wall on his own. That's why Nehemiah says, let us Oh my God. He says, let us start rebuilding the wall. Watch this. Because one can chase a thousand, but two can put ten thousand to flight. I wish I had some help up in here in the sanctuary. Understand that you can't do it all by yourself. I know you think you gifted. I know you think you anointed. I know you think you got the power. I know you think because you speak in tongues and roll around in the church that you're the only one who can do it. The says, Nehemiah says, let us rebuild the wall. He says, freedom, I wonder what Houston would look like all right, all right. if you took down your walls first. All right. Gateway of hope, I wonder what Houston would look like. First ward, second ward, third ward, fourth ward. For South Houston, I wish I had some help. I don't understand the whole perimeter of Houston, but the North Loop, the West Loop, the South Loop, what would it look like Kaya, if you set down your wall and you got on the wall? You joined hands. One can chase a thousand, but two can put ten thousand. Tell your neighbors that we're going to do this together. We're going to do this together. Okay. Woo! 
Not only did Nehemiah recognize the condition of the wall, point number two is in the text. He recognized the reality of his opposition. Point number two for those who are writing. Not only did he recognize the condition of the wall, but he recognized the reality of his opposition. Whenever God calls you to do something great, you will be met with opposition. All right. The greater the vision, the greater the opposition. I said the greater the vision, the greater the opposition, the greater the anointing, the greater the attack, the greater the anointing, the greater the attack, the greater the purpose, the greater the persecution, the greater the power, the more come the imps. Is there anybody here who says, I'm going to rebuild the walls regardless of, oh my God. All right, all right. When Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall, it didn't take long. It didn't take long, didn't take long. for him to be met with opposition. Y'all just thought I was making that up. I put all that way so that this text can get you to understand that Sam Ballot, Tobiah, and Geshem. Tell my neighbor said Sam Ballot, Tobiah, and Geshem were the haters in Nehemiah's day. They were the pessimists, the naysayers, the critics, the opposition. And if Nehemiah had to face opposition, sure enough, you know you don't have to face opposition. I wish I had some help in here. Oh, I wish I had some help. Jesus had to face opposition. Huh? You don't believe me? Can I call a witness? Come here, Judas. I wish I had some help up in here. You got to be careful how you treat Judas because Jesus didn't get rid of Judas. He understood that Judas would get rid of himself. Huh? Tell your neighbor and say, you need the presence of opposition. Right. Right. Okay. Woo. He didn't take Nehemiah long. Went to Jerusalem, surveyed the city, assessed the city, cried out to God with all of his heart, crying out for the people, wondering how it was going to be rebuilt. He immediately got up after morning to rebuild the wall. But immediately after you get up, watch this, to start building comes the opposition. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Three people contrary to rebuilding. Sam Ballad the Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arab laughed at Nehemiah, ridiculed Nehemiah, despised Nehemiah, mocked Nehemiah, even question Nehemiah. And I really get leery of people who question. Oh, God called you to the ministry. Uh, I believe I heard his voice. The Bible declares my sheep know my voice. A stranger, they will not follow. Take that able to say, he called me. I don't know what he called you to do, but I'm gonna make sure I'm faithful to whatever he called me to do. I gotta answer to God, not man, not the church of God in Christ, not the Baptist church. I gotta answer to God. When your kingdom priorities are in place, the enemy stirs up, hear this, spiritual agitators. <laughs> when your kingdom priorities are in place, the enemy stirs up spiritual agitators. When your kingdom assignment, when you are dedicated to gateway, you're dedicated to freedom, to rebuilding the kingdom of God, the enemy sends spiritual agitators. And watch this, spiritual agitators are dressed up too. They come in pretty packages. They come in three-piece suits. They come in six-inch stilettos. Oh, I wish I had some help. Take my neighbor says spiritual agitators. Symbolic, symbolic of antagonistic forces. Symbolic of naysayers. He was, hear this, indignant. How are you going to be indignant when God gives me an assignment? You want to know how you spot a critic and spot a naysayer? By the way they respond to your calling. You don't believe me? Ask Nehemiah. The text says, Sam Ballot was 
indignant when he heard that the rebuilding of the wall was going up. He became angry and incest. Watch this. Sam Ballard asked the question, what is it that he's doing? Sam Ballard said, will they complete the wall in a day? I'm trying to figure out why saints get indignant. The real theological question is, if you're really saved, how can you get angry about a work that needs to be done for your father in the kingdom of God? You shouldn't be indignant. You should be happy. You should be excited. You should be joyful. You should be encouraging. Point number three, and I'm going to go to my seat. Number one, he says, not only do I have to recognize the condition of the wall, number two, I have to recognize the reality of my opposition. But point number three, I need to remain unstoppable in applying yes. momentum. Yes. 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 Good, good, good. Says, oh my God, I need to remain unstoppable in applying the momentum Applying, I wish the church really understood that Jesus said, when I leave you, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. But he said, I'm going to give you a comforter. In fact, in the book of Acts, he said, before you leave here, he says, do not leave without the power of the Holy Ghost. Tap your neighbor and say, in order for you to rebuild the wall, you've got to remain unstoppable. Applying momentum. Well, what is my momentum? Applying the Holy Ghost. Applying the power of Jesus. Tap your neighbor. Say, neighbor, he left you with power. Exusea power. Dunamis power. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power to feel right. Nehemiah says, stand to your feet, I'm done. He says, he says, remain unstoppable. Huh. Tap your neighbor, say, you gotta be unstoppable. You can't let people agitate you. You can't let circumstances and situations get you off track. You've gotta be unstoppable, unmoving, always abounding in the love of God. Nehemiah in chapter 2 I feel like preaching now in verse 20 the text says that Nehemiah answered he says I hear the opposition but there was a conjunction tell your neighbor say conjunction Nehemiah said I hear the opposition but the God of heaven tap your neighbor and say the God of heaven will give us success freedom temple I stop by to tell you gateway of hope I stop by to tell you that the God of heaven will give you success tap your neighbor say I will be successful I'm building a kingdom I'm rebuilding the wall I'm saving the lost in the name of Jesus Nehemiah oh my God the greatest part of this text uh, is that it was revealed to me uh, that Nehemiah took out his faith file uh, Tim and Abel said when you're building uh, you need a faith file uh, when you're building uh, you need a faith file uh, with unstoppable momentum uh, what is the faith file uh, Nehemiah said uh, no weapon uh, formed against me uh, shall prosper uh, what is the faith file uh, Nehemiah said, though an enemy come up 
against me to eat up my flesh. Nehemiah says, He who has begun a good work in me shall, 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 shall tap your neighbor. Say it's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. Nehemiah had a faith file. He said, And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and for them who be called according to his purpose. Nehemiah had a faith file. He said, So I know the plans that I have for you, said the Lord. All right, family, listen, we're out of time, but we're definitely not out of word. Listen, come join us any Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. The address is going to show up on the screen. Feel free to join us on our website, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We would love to be connected and be a part of your freedom.